Thanks for tuning in once again here at ProLine TV. And if you're watching this video over on one of our other channels, we sure hope that you will make your way over here to ProLine TV. Please subscribe because this is where you're going to be able to get all of our racing videos for free. You get all of our content for free, uh, which, of course, we are still not uh, providing over on our horse racing channel. Uh, we're not telling you to leave that channel. All we're telling you is if you want some additional racing and all of our picks all the time, then please subscribe here over on ProLine TV. How's it going, John? Good, Greg. How are you? Good. I heard that you had a pretty nice day, pretty eventful day. Yeah, we had a horse that uh, won the eighth race today at Aqueduct, and uh, the jockey almost fell off. He jumped over a puddle at the 16th pole, and uh, he actually lost his irons. He was hanging on for dear life, but he held on, and he got the job done. Who's there? Romero Mara. Oh, I don't think I've heard of him. Okay. He rides he rides his horse all the time. He's he's a, he's a terrific young rider. His uh cousin is uh, Rajiv Mara, who was uh, Oh, well, okay. His yeah, he worked on the Fox Sports 1 uh TV show during the summer. He went back to riding uh last week after his, uh, retiring a, a few years ago and uh, he actually had his first win back. So Excellent. Well, congratulations. Hopefully, uh, we'll hear more of that kind of good news uh, before we even, well, actually, once we hit 2025, 20, we're only a few weeks away uh, from the calendar turning. And that means a lot of these horses are getting older. So sometimes everyone gets one, every horse celebrates a birthday January 1st. They all turn one year older. Yeah. So, uh, and then these th two year olds that we're talking about here today at Aqueduct. They're going to be turning three real soon. And you know what that means? That means that they do, or they're trying to qualify for the Kentucky Derby. And the two races we're going to talk about today are Derby. You can call them very, 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 very early Derby. I don't even know if the right word would be prep race because it really isn't. But it's a points race. It's a Kentucky Derby points race. We have two of them back-to-back, -back, races eight and nine at Aqueduct. Before we do that, just want to rem uh, remind everybody what happened last week uh, in the race, uh, the Cigar Mile Handicap. Uh, we talked to John, you uh, hit locked, and you talked about uh, locked coming off, of course. Uh, this was the horse that actually finished third in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Race back in November of last year. Took the entire year, basically almost year off. Came back in October at Aqueduct and ran a seven in an optional claiming race, winning that race. This is the Pletcher horse. And so this was the second race, uh, the uh, Bridges Cup race, and locked, sure looked locked in. Uh, his odds were 9-2 to two when we did the show. He went down to 2-1, to one, and I believe Locke was the favorite. But uh, you got to be very impressed with the way Locke looked. And uh, this is going to be a horse to contend with this year, next year. Yeah. The good news is they're not retiring him like they do to a lot of these other horses, and uh, they keep him around. By the way, I'm giving you a number. Oh, he ran another seven. Okay, so he paired up sevens. Okay. And so uh, that's a horse that we will definitely remember and hopefully be able to uh, talk about again next year. Uh, by the way, uh, in the free pick race, and this is why this is what we're saying. That's why you can subscribe over here at Proline TV because, or of course, if you want, uh, you could still become a Patreon member. But why not just subscribe for free over at uh, here at Proline TV? This is where you get the free pick. And the free pick last week was race number. Actually, what was race number ten? And John, you hit the exact. It was a fifty-five dollar exacta, correct? Yes, sir. And that was a nice one. So our key horse ran second with one of our hookups. So uh, people can't complain about last week. They did no, it. not at all. A couple of winners. And uh obviously you only get two winners from last week if you subscribe here over on Proline TV. Okay, so we do have a free pick coming up a little bit later on, once again. Proline TV. It'll be uh, one of the races here at Aqueduct. But first of all, we're going to get into the races that are available here uh, to everybody uh, on YouTube. And that is going to be races eight and nine. We're going to start with race eight, John. And they're both, again, two-year-old races. So uh, what is this New York Stallion Stakes uh, deal? It's a program where if you're bred in New York and you're a New York bred, you get to run in. The, they have a couple of these races a year. They're crazy purses, 500,000. 
honestly, most of these horses in the race, uh, you know, there are a couple of good ones. But again, they're New York breads. I don't think this is points for the Derby and the Oaks, by the way. I'm not sure. Oh. But I don't think so. I think it's just uh, you're getting $500,000 because you were bred in New York. So that's what ah, it's about. Wow. That's pretty generous. Yeah. They're I trying mean... to encourage people to buy horses. And when you, you know, if you buy a New York bread and you get to run in a $500,000 race, well, you get your money out in plus because these horses, for the most part, Warren purchase for anything, any kind of money like that. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to talk more about these uh, prep races as we get closer, of course, to the Derby, but we're just going to remind everybody as well on a weekly basis, if there's any news or if there are any horses that are making news so uh, we can keep you up to date uh, because uh, we're going to also, even though we didn't go to Gulfstream uh, with our races, we're going to start to hit uh, the Gulfstream cards again real soon. Uh, because that's the, the Gulf Stream really this starts. Is, this is their winter meet, their championship meet. It started on Thanksgiving, and and uh, you know the horses are starting to ship down there now, and it's going to really get going the next couple of weeks, the next month or so. And as they start to run the stake race as well, we do stake races for the most part on this show. So I'm sure we'll be hitting Gulf Stream, Oaklawn, a lot of places. Santa Anita reopens the day after Christmas, and that's a huge day. They have, I think, four or five stake races, including the Malibu and uh, horses shipping in from all over the country for that day. So that's a big day. Uh, maybe we'll figure something out and do that, uh, you know, maybe do uh, that day. Yeah. Of, it doesn't have to be a Saturday. No. I don't know what day the first day after Christmas is, but if you look on the calendar, you can let me know. Maybe we'll do a special Santa Anita show. Uh, that is uh, the 26th. It's a right. Thursday. Okay, so maybe we'll do a show like on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of that. Well, Wednesday's Christmas, but uh, I guess we we could still do the show. Oh, yeah. That. I mean, you know, we're, we're, yeah, you know, I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to say anything <laughs> bad about us, but we just we're we, we we're, we're we, we, we you know, what's interesting is, is that whenever I hear I see these people on TV, you know, they have their broadcasting careers and they do these jobs that are in the media and then, and then they're off on the holidays and stuff. It, I, I don't understand why myself. It's like, wait a second. You're making a lot of money. You have a great career. There's a lot of people off. So why wouldn't you, why shouldn't you be on? Because normally those people don't have the opportunity to see you or hear you because they're working. Exactly. Now they're off. Now they want to see you. And then they turn the TV on or the radio on and you got some fill in. <laughs> uh, I mean, so we don't we don't have any fill-ins. We don't have fill-ins. It's no. us or nobody. That's it's right. Us there's no show. So, so we're we're we give us give us a break here. We're we're troopers. Okay, but by the way, absolutely, we'll we'll be hooking up. And by the way, that's uh, is that that's two Tuesdays from now. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want Christmas to be here before to be we know a it. Saturday show. It could be a no. Right. Two weeks, so it's about ten days from now. We'll be yes, on the air. Like that. uh, so that should be a lot of fun. We'll remind everybody next week. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, by the way, just taking a look at the points races, uh, there are 10 point, uh, 10 point races uh, this weekend. Uh, one is tomorrow on Friday. That's the Remington Springboard Mile. I've never heard of Remington Park before. It's in Oklahoma. I actually did that race. Well, uh, I, you know what? I'm going to give everybody another freebie here. Well, oh, I like that race. Hold on. No, you're going to give that freebie. Uh, 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 you're going to hold that one. No, I'm not. I'm going to give everybody here one, and we'll give that one anyway. Oh, okay, see? I'm sharing with customers, and why Very not? Nice. Yeah. I was, I was going to force them to go to ProLine TV, but you're going to go ahead and give it to free, 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 free. You want me to wait? I mean, you know, there. No, I'll, yes. I'll give it out. I'm go gonna, ahead and give it out, John. I like the horse in there that ran once at Churchill Downs for Ron Moquette, the three-horse speed king. He ran a big number. He went off a big price that day at 22 to 1. Forget 22 to 1 tomorrow night, but they thought enough to put the horse right into a $300,000 stake race. Um, it's the 12th race at Remington. I like the three-horse there. Play exact is with the seven, Jolly Samurai, the eight, Complex Music, and the nine, Dr. Ruben N. Three with seven, eight, nine, in exact is tomorrow's 12th race out at Remington. There you How go. How about that? That's a bonus pick, extra pick, and that is the Remington Springboard Mile at Remington Park, and that is a mile race. That's on Friday. Then on Saturday, 
Uh, you you said this is that five horse race uh, with Baffert. Oh, the Star of Baffert has, Baffert has three of them in, and uh, three of the five in. So. Three out of the five, and that's by the way, a couple of weeks ago through. there was a five horse field. If you remember, at Del Mar, Baffert had four of the horses in the race, and the Timiak Teen horse won. <laughs> so it does happen, but no selection there. Sorry. Wow, that's pretty funny. So there you go. And then next week, by the way, the neck, there's only one more points race this year after that one. And that is the December 21st at the fairgrounds, the gun runner. So that's a 10 point race. And then that's it for 2024. So again, I'm going to keep everybody up to date here on our show about all of these points races as we follow the Derby trail. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this race here. Race number eight. Again, these are two-year-olds, so they don't have a whole lot of experience, not a lot of activity, but still we'll go with it. Uh, the morning line favorites here are the five and the two. Uh, Bold Fortune, a five to two shot coming off a nine uh, in his last race. Uh, actually, he's gone pretty much almost wire to wire his last two races. And then the two, Sacrosant, uh, is a nine to five shot with Brad Cox training. Uh, actually, both of these horses uh, I've done a lot of wire to wire racing. So it could be a speed duel, uh, from the beginning to the end between the number two and the number five, John. Well, I, I don't know if there'll be a speed duel, but we'll, you know, we'll see. Well, we hope so, I guess. Maybe well, it'll be a uh, price the five, race. The five horse ran a nine last time out, which was a six point new top. It was yep. also run at Finger Lakes, which is a speed favoring track. The day he won, that track was a conveyor belt for the most part. I remember that day. I bet that that, that race. Um, I don't particularly like this horse off the nine. And Sacrosanct, the problem with this horse is that numbers-wise, 15, 14, 14, which, you know, is okay. It's not like he really showed any improvement. The problem is that the horse won all three races, and he won all three races by whatever he wanted. So maybe this horse runs what he has to run to win, but he's going to be no value. To me, there's a good bet in the race. And I would take a shot with the seven, Man in France. Now, the thing about Man in France, number seven, first of all, he's five to one. Second of all, he ran very well first time out. He ran that 11 first. Oh, yeah, that's very impressive. Yeah, he ran an 11. No one else has it. The, the two never ran an 11. The two ran 14s. Thackerson. Correct. So why do I want to bet him? So he bounced off the 11 to the 15 last time out. I'm hoping, and I would expect a forward move. And at five to one, I'm willing to take a chance, and this will be my top selection in the race. No question about it. Brad Cox is on fire. Every horse he sends out runs well. This horse is three for three and the horse to beat. But I'm looking at figures, and I like the yeah. number seven man in finance to upset and win. I would play exact as with the two. Oh, you're going into the exact as two. Okay, go ahead. Everything. Seven with the two, five, and ten. Seven, uh, that's man in, fi in finance with sacrosanct, bold fort, Chin and the 10 soon to be king seven with the two five ten obviously you could reverse them as well all right so the horse is uh not considered the two morning line favorites you're throwing in there uh let's take a look at those uh let's see one of them is going to be the let's see you got the two you got the well you actually we were betting on one of them but the other horse is the 10 and that is uh soon to be king a six to one shot castellano on board and and really it's just a couple of things interesting about this horse uh, he's, it looks like he's the most experienced horse in the field. He actually has raced a bit. He's got seven races on his resume already, four of those at Aqueduct. But uh, looking at his uh, sheet line, uh, he's, he's, it, it hasn't been perfectly um, uh, set up from first to last, but it's pretty good. He's gone from a 27 all the way to a 14. He had a couple of missteps along the way, but the 14 was his last race, and it's his best race. Uh, and he's also run what four straight in the money. So uh, I can understand why this horse is by the way, your... the misstep isn't such a misstep because that race was a mile. But if you just take a sprint race, as like you pointed out, he's actually improved with each and every start. So, mm. and he's six to one. All right. Let's see if I see anything else in here that I, uh, let's see. Oh. By the way, what is this? Why would this three horse even be in this race? Because he's a New York bred. They're running for $500,000. Anything could happen in any race. <laughs> I mean, the trainer is 0%. The no, jockey no, is 2%. By the, way, 
by the way, the trainer does a terrific job. He's uh, he's there. He's a finger leg shipper for the most part, but he he has horses here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's only got 15 starts, so. Well, but, but the meet just started two weeks ago. Yeah. And, and before you knock the trainer, this is my trainer. He's trained. No, I'm just, I'm just he going trained, over the he trained, he trained Mama's Goal today, Jimmy Ferraro. So All right. There you go. So he's no longer zero percent. Yeah, exactly. And be um, nice to him. He won a race for me today. And Katie <laughs> Davis, was she on board? No. No. Uh, no Katie no. Davis is 2%, percent, no. one win out of 48. So that combination, that it would scare me away. And the horse has never won a race either. Anyway, uh, like you said, anything could happen. Uh, meanwhile, uh, let's see. The uh, the other horse uh, that I uh, uh, pointed at, that I wanted to point out would only be the eight, I guess. Uh, Buddha and uh, Buddha uh, uh, coming off of sixteen. The line is better each race. I guess you can expect a little bit of a bounce though, because that's a six point new top. But the horse has improved each race, and it's twenty to one. And again, we're only looking maybe for a try or an exacta. So the eight would be the other horse that I would uh, maybe consider for exotics. But there you go. Uh, that is race number eight at Aqueduct. By, now, by the way, by the way, by the way, the Buddha ran that 16 and he ran it at Finger Lakes, by the way. He was in the same race that, oh, Bold, okay. Fortune, that Bold Fortune ran the nine. So okay. just like Bold Fortune ran the new big top, this horse was in that race. So it may have been a suck up number, you know. It was just in the race, and it, and they they drug they dragged them around the track for the most part. That horse doesn't have much of a chance, but I don't want to talk you off any. Oh no, I mean I'm not uh, putting money. I'm just on that trying horse. to teach to teach to help. Uh, by the way, speaking of teach, what about two year old handicapping? Uh, it must be very difficult compared Impossible. because you don't have a lot of race uh, experience to go on. It's, I hate those races. Those are the, if I had a choice, I would never bet a two year old race. First of all, most of them, you know, nothing about, they all start off as first time starters. So really who has the advantage? The clockers have the advantage. You know, there are things you could use as tools. You could look up breeding, look up how their relatives did. You know, a lot of horses do what their relatives did. And, uh, it's a very it's very difficult to to, to uh, handle. You got to watch the board. You got to see who's taking money because the money a lot of times is right. And horses, you know, we've you've been doing this long enough to see yourself where a horse will go twenty one first out and then in his second start run a fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. So you know they they just naturally get better with racing. Sure. Not every trainer squeezes them early. You have to know the trainers. A lot of trainers take their time and let horses work their way. You know, like Mott, for example, doesn't win a lot first out. His horses a lot of times do better second out. Chad, Brett, like other trainers, Wesley Ward loves to win first out. When he sends out a horse first time, a lot of times they run their best runner, uh, their best race. So you have to know the trainers. You have to know intention. You got to read workouts. Two-year-old racing is the most difficult racing for the most part. And when there's a superstar, like a Baffert horse, they pay $3.80. Yeah. So who yeah, the hell needs waste. it anyway? Yeah. Uh, what, so where are all these, like, because you can find stats for just what you were saying. Where is that again? I forget. I asked yeah, Chad, I guess Chad about that at, once. You can look at it in the racing form, but it's like everything else. I mean, like those, uh, the ones that, like you said, uh, Mott uh, is, is, you know, he has a good yeah, percentage in, racing, in first in races. Race, in the racing form, on, in, under the workouts, it'll show you like a jockey and trainer, com uh, what, what, you know, how they do together. Uh, a trainer puts on blinkers on a horse, how they okay. do on blinkers. But is there a website? No, it's on DRF, Daily Racing Form. Okay. It's in the PPs. They're just stats that they add, you know. Okay. Well, I'll check it out. All right. So race number nine. So this is obviously right after race eight. That's how it goes. I learned that usually, back in kindergarten. Usually. Um, so this is another seven for a long race. The morning line favorites are the seven and the 12. The seven is Boston's finest, a three to one shot, a Chad Brown horse coming off back to back 16s at Aqueduct. And the 12 is Stone Smuggler, a seven to two shot. And uh, Lascano is on board. Abreu uh, is having a, is off to a decent start uh, at this meet. And uh, Smuggler is coming off a 14, which is pretty impressive in his third start. But uh, we might be in a bounce situation since that was less than a month ago. So what about uh, the two favorites in this race, John? 
Well, between the two of them, I I landed on Stone Smuggler. I just he already ran the fourteen where Bold uh, Finest, the Chad Brown horse, Boston's Finest, I should say, only ran sixteens. The the advantage Boston's Finest has is that this horse is cutting back in distance. This horse ran a mile last time out. Now cuts back to seven furlongs, but I think the seven will be a lot shorter price than the twelve horse. Hmm. And does that have anything to do with the uh, the position, or is it basically Chad Brown? No, it's basically Chad Brown, and the horse, for the most part, hasn't done anything wrong. You know, they're okay. close. And, but I, the advantage that the 12 horse has, uh, Stone Smuggler, and the reason she was my top pick is because she already ran the 14. She hasn't done anything wrong. She has three starts. She's improved in each and every one of them. But, again, you're dealing with lightly raced horses. Yep. Anything goes. All right. Um, so taking a look at this field, uh, the one uh, is coming off a of 14. Are we expecting a bounce from Bam's that, Bliss Kiss? That's a six-point new top. The barn's doing well. They're off to a good start. I think they have four or five wins at this meet already. You know, I'm, I'm including the horse because she's listed at 8-1 to one on the morning line, so she'll probably go off longer than that. If you look at the odds that she's gone off, she went off 27-1 to one last time. <clears throat> excuse me, 10 to one and eight to one before that. So she never really gets bet. Why would she get bet Saturday? Yeah. It's interesting because uh, not only is the one, I mean, not <laughs> only is your 12 coming off of 14, but the one's coming off of 14. By the and... way, they, they were in the same race last time. The one and the 12 are both okay. in the same race. There you go. That's right. There you go. And then the, the, tw the 12 finished in third and the one finished in fourth. Exactly. So, okay, maybe they like, you know, hanging out with each other at the finish line. <laughs> well, uh, so maybe that's what, you know, they'll be in first and second this time. Okay. It that's what happen. we want. Okay. Uh, the one. All right. So, yeah, the one and the 12 look like nice uh, plays there. Uh, also, uh, let's see, the three is a five to one shot, Mischief Lady. Uh, we have a new rider for the first time. And this horse hasn't really done a whole lot wrong, improved each time. Uh, the last two on dirt were 21 and 17. So, you know, even if the horse approves, uh, it looks like you probably need a little bit more of uh, – I mean, a big bounce, like a, like a four- or five-point top. You're talking about Mischievous Lady. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but th there's another way you could read this. He actually, She actually had excuses in her first two races. Her first race was on the grass, so that doesn't mean anything. Her second lifetime start was on the mud, on the yep. slop. Her last race was her first time on a fast track. And she ran the 17. Yeah. So she could be getting better on her own. Or she didn't like, you know, she finally got a fast track, which she liked. So she ran well on it last time. At, it's like a one number 17. You know, the horse is only five to one. I would want a longer price. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's almost like the, it's almost like whoever put the odds together was, was saying, it, doing exactly what you just did. And yeah. And oh, you know, this is not a bad horse, but yeah, five to one. That's not what we want. We don't want the the lines maker to get cute. We want the lines maker <laughs> to give us a good line here. But the, the betting public will, will do the uh, will do the line for us. Um, Listen, you could look at the five horse blossoming. Uh, I don't blossoming a uh, erudite, 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 okay. blossoming erudite. Okay, so this horse is a little different than the other horses. This, the other horses had two excuses before the last race. This horse has excuses in his last two races, both on the grass. Yes. Before that, she ran the 20 on the dirt. Now, the last two races were both 18s. How do we know if they weren't dirt races that they would have, wouldn't have been 18s also? They certainly may have been okay. because it wasn't a big turf jump up. The horse only improved two points when switching to the turf. I'm just saying, I'm just pointing out horses that could improve at big prices, getting to try a super somewhere in the bottom. That's All right. Uh, and then the eight and eight to one shot after only racing once and running a 21. Yeah. And now how do we know what she's going to do? In the <laughs> we don't know anything. That's the whole point of betting two-year-olds. You don't know anything. I mean, one race and it was a 21. And she and won. Was... She won with the 21. She didn't take any money that day. So the board didn't tip you off. I have no clue of what she's going to do. Uh, the nine. Uh, boy, uh, look at this nine, baby. We've got that trainer, the hot trainer there, Chad Summers. 
who's who's riding at 29%. Yeah. Uh, he's only been in seven races, but he's got two wins out of seven. Katie Davis, not so hot. Uh, just 2% so far in the meet. But uh, so far, so good. 19 and then 17. Uh, didn't win the last race after winning right away. So at least in the first two races, Deza Rock has uh, improved. Yes, and if she could certainly improve again in career start number three. Yeah. She She's another horse in the race that if you wanted to make a case for, go ahead. Uh, what about the 10, Princess Mischief? Because this is a 10-to-1 shot with Castellano, who has not done anything wrong. Matter of fact, I like this horse. This horse is run a 23, a 22, a 19, and a 15. And the 15 is just a point away from the two horses that we started the show with. Plus, you're getting Castellano. Plus, you're getting 10-to-1. Yeah, but the 15 was in the slop. But listen, I'm using the horse at the price, no question about it. And then uh, the 11 is another 10 to 1 shot with Chad Brown and Dylan Davis. That's a heck of a combo, but the numbers okay. are very slow. Yeah, the 26 in career start number two is actually a bad number for that horse. You would have wanted, you would have much rather preferred a forward move in career start number two as opposed to a backward move. She went backwards off the 22. That's a bad sign. All right, John. So you've got the 12 on top. What else are you going to do here? I'm going to use them in exact as with the one, Bam's Bliss Kiss, the five, Blossoming Erudite, and the yes. 10, Princess Mischief. 12 with the one, five, and 10. All right. Then I'm going to do the 10. That'll be my top choice, Princess Mischief. And uh, you've got the one, so I'm not going to do the one. Instead, I'm going mm. to do the three, the nine, and the 12. 10 with 3, 9, 12? Yep, and you've got 12 over 1, 5, 10. John also went with 2 over, excuse me, 7 over 2, 5, 10 in race number 8. So John has a double, an 8, 9 double of 7, 12. And uh, don't forget the free pick to Remington. Uh, what is it? Spring something mile. Oh, the 12th race at Remington, 3 with 7, 8, 9. And that's it for... Our free coverage. By the way, the Remington race is Friday night. The other races are Saturday. Just pointing it out. And that's it for our free coverage here on Horsepower PSN. But you don't have to worry because we're headed to another channel. And it's free. <laughs> Proline TV. Go there. Subscribe. I'm not sure what you're waiting for. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and and step out now for you fellas over on uh, Horsepower PSN. And now we're going to go ahead and continue here with our final pick of the day, John, and that is going to be race number five at Aqueduct. Yeah, and I like a horse in here. I like the number seven horse, BD Saints. Uh, this is a three-year-old colt who ran back on November 23rd. He was in a stake race that day, so he didn't get to use Lasix. He goes back on Lasix today. He's uh, he's stretching out to a mile, and I think he's going to run well here. I like uh, Manny Franco rode him last time for the first time. I think he's sitting on a big effort. Number seven, BD Saints is a top pick. Play exact is with number three, Bourbon Chase, number five, Shadow Dragon, and number six, Mighty Atlas. Seven with the three, five, and six. And by the way, that seven, uh, I like the the uh, the nine. You got the you got a, a twelve and not matter of fact, if you just get rid of the even if the eleven's fine on dirt, yeah, uh, it's a really nice line on grass of 19, 18, 15, 12, and nine. Yeah, but his grass and dirt are in line. That's why I went to him. I don't think he's a turf horse. I think he can handle either. Okay, so there you go. And it, what, is this a, a dirt race? Yes, it is. There is no more turf racing in New York until March or April. It's, right. winter, it's winter here, in case you didn't notice. I, I actually have. <laughs> it's pretty cold here. Uh, it's been. Uh, I'm enjoying it, though. I prefer the cold weather. I like it, too. I much prefer the cold. <laughs> yeah. Um, don't forget, next week, uh, I think we have some other – well, keep in mind, too, two weeks from now is when we talked about having that really fun Tuesday deal. Uh, but next week, I believe – I'm pretty sure there are some other good races. Let me see here. Next and two – yeah, oh, that's right, Gulfstream. Because okay. Gulfstream has the grade two Fort Lauderdale, the grade three Harlan's Holiday, and the grade three Sewanee River. So We are going to Florida next week. 
that would be that would be well no it's hot down there so i'll stay no. here you can go to florida <laughs> uh, know, but, it'll probably rain if i go to florida so yeah, yeah. so we don't want that so we're gonna go ahead and uh, say goodbye to everybody we'll see you next week thanks john thanks greg stay safe and be well and thank you everybody for joining and hit subscribe thank you see